Hey friends, John and Ashley from Tiny Shiny Home here. If you've been watching our recent videos, you'll know that we've been doing so much work to cool ourselves down this summer. We installed shade sails on our metal truss cover, 2,500 more watts of solar facing east and west, and we put a mini split in our vintage Airstream. But what about Adelaide's adorable little Super Adobe Dome Home? Well, today we're on a quest to find the smallest, most efficient AC that we can fit in there. Let's get started. I know sooner or later it will come The day that I know I'm in we have a lot of projects going on here, so in case you're not familiar, this nine-foot earth bag dome was built for our oldest daughter, Adelaide, during a seven-day workshop here on our property. Then we had spent the next several months transforming it into a cozy space complete with hand-finished earthen plaster, hyper adobe steps, a separate mini dome, and a tiny wood stove to keep it warm in the winter. It even has an off-grid solar system, bottle cap, and penny floors, a custom-built bed, and of course, as many reclaimed materials as we could find. But even with all that planning, alternative building projects like this will have some trade-offs. So let's talk about thermal mass efficiency and thermal mass transfer. Surprisingly, thick dirt walls don't necessarily have a high insulative R value. What they do have is thermal efficiency. What that means is that if it's super hot or cold outside, the thick walls will keep that temperature from seeping in naturally, and the space inside will hold its temperature easily. But the wrinkle is something called thermal mass transfer. When the sun warms the earthen wall, it gets absorbed and slowly passes through to the inside. We found this takes about 10 to 12 hours. Now, most of our other earth bag buildings here in our homestead have roofs with insulation, so they're shaded during the hottest part of the day, and they only get that direct sun early in the morning or late at night. With clear stories and passive solar, we can use this to our advantage and we can run the longest wall to the south so that the sun will naturally warm that building when it's cold outside. The dome though does not have a roof and it is being blasted by the sun all day in all directions. Yeah, it's gonna be great in the winter, but as you can imagine during the summer, it's making it very, very warm inside. On top of this, because it's a recently finished build, the moisture in the bags and plaster are still drying out. So as it heats up, it feels like a wet blanket. This shouldn't be a problem in about a year, but for now it's kind of an issue. Yeah, and granted, this is one we knew we'd have to figure out, but didn't realize how difficult it would be for this particular building. So here are our challenges. Number one, power. We initially designed this building to be self-sustaining most of the year with a small EcoFlow River 2 Pro and a 250 watt ground mount solar panel. So even though we have a much larger 28 kilowatt hour battery bank and 10 kilowatt solar array system, the dome wasn't connected to that on purpose. We had other utility lines we couldn't dig through, so we were limited by how much power our cooling choice would use. Number two, windows. Because of the size of the dome, we picked the smallest utility windows we could find. However, this became a problem when we started looking into cooling options. We'll explain this in a minute. Number three, shape and floor space. Yep, it's a tiny dome with a built-in bed. There's not a ton of extra floor space and the curved walls made mounting something nearly impossible, at least at this point after it was already built. The first thing we tried was an evaporative cooler. We got this at Home Depot. It was pretty cheap and it came with ice packs to put in the water compartment. We'd keep a few jugs of water in the fridge and that along with the ice packs would at least keep it semi-comfortable if we started it a few hours before bed. However, even though this only used about 50 watts an hour, it would frequently drain the entire River 2 Pro battery bank overnight. Adelaide would wake up at like 4 a.m. The power would be off, it would be hot. It was not good. So you know what we did next? Research. A window unit running off an extension cord from the big system would have been the simplest option. The newer ones are actually pretty efficient, but the windows were too small. We couldn't find anything on the market that would fit. A mini split would have been overkill for 68 square feet, way overpowered and mounting it inside there would have just taken over the entire space if we could have even found a place to mount it. Also those utility lines were in the way and this would have needed a proper trenched electrical line. Then we looked into those AC floor units. The smallest we could find was 8,000 BTUs, which would have used too much power to run on the small system, but could work with an extension cord, maybe? At a little over 100 feet, it was pushing it. These things are notoriously inefficient and do need to be vented through a window with large tubes. Small window sizes got in the way again here, with none of them being small enough for the vent boards to fit in the tiny windows. We almost decided just to use evaporative cooler for another couple months until the temperatures cooled down, but then we remembered our friends at EcoFlow. 
Yeah, they have this thing called the Wave 2. Lots of people were talking about it. Some liked it, some didn't. The more I researched, most people just didn't understand it. But it looked like it might just be the perfect balance of size, efficiency, and portability for Adelaide's dome home. So I reached out to EcoFlow to see if they wanted to do another video together. They shipped over a Wave 2, and we're going to tell you exactly how it performed during the hottest and rainiest part of the summer. Thank you, EcoFlow, for sponsoring this video and for sending us the Wave 2 to experiment with. Now. Let's do it. So, what is the Wave 2? It's a pretty impressive little piece of technology. A portable AC that can both cool and heat with a custom compressor and unique heat exchanger setup that allows it to create 5100 BTUs of cooling power and 6100 BTUs of heating power using only 500 to 600 watts. These are made for very small spaces, about 100 square feet, can be charged multiple ways, and can be paired with additional batteries and power stations to extend the runtime. It has an IPX4 rating and a smart condensation drain feature. Combine that with multiple modes in app control, you've got yourself a tiny powerful air conditioner for a tiny adorable dome. At least that's the hope, right? So let's unbox this thing and see how it works. Can you grab one of the handles? <laughs> got it. Adelaide's dome home is about to get a whole lot cool. Oh man, it's a bunch of stuff. Uh, okay, that's not too big, but it's a little big. Also, there's three of us in this dome. We're a little cramped. That's in this box. Do you see anything else in the box? Oh yeah, that's what this is the battery. You can order a battery to come with this, and so that's gonna increase the length of time. We should be able to run this. We're gonna do some tests. We're gonna find out. Oh, it's heavier than it looks. <laughs> that's a pretty solid amount of battery right there. I mean, it's not bad. So, This thing is pretty simple, but you do have to vent it to the outside. This comes with a vent board, which I have measured and it should fit. We'll find out in a minute. So you want to basically snap these on. Is that the right one? I don't know. Hold on. There. <laughs> it's very easy, I'm telling you. So we just have to connect this pipe to the smaller one, this pipe <laughs> to the bigger one, and then we just got to turn it on and plug it in. It's 90 degrees in here right now, just for reference. And so I got to find the plug. Gotta be close. There. Okay. How's that already cold? <laughs> so it says, its own little temperature sensor says it's 88 degrees in here right now. So that's about a two degree difference from what that's showing over there. And see app, look at this. So since we now have Wi-Fi, the blank stall property actually comes into the dome. So both the River 2 and now EcoFlow are hooked into our Wi-Fi EcoFlow app so we can control them from our phone. Even Adelaide can do it. So this is interesting to see how much it uses. So this thing uses about 500 watts, especially when it's running full blast. The downside is, is that we could only do a 250 watt panel for the River 2. So I don't know that we'll be able to run this all the time. It may be that it needs to charge up during the day and then it, it cools it off at night. Maybe? I don't know. We're, here's what we're going to do. We're going to use this for at least three or four or five days and like figure out what the cycle is. Okay, so how did this actually work in real world testing? Well, we had a bit of a bumpy start. Uh, I really wanted to be able to run this thing off of the battery that came with it. It was 1.1 kilowatt hours and that was the goal. 
It would run all night. It would keep it cool in there. But when you're starting at about 90 plus degrees inside and the Wave 2 has to run full blast at 500 watts, the math just doesn't math and it only lasts a few hours before that battery's dead. Next, we tried to connect the River 2 Pro as a backup since it had its own battery. Yeah, it has a 768 watt hour battery, so I thought, hey, this will get us a little more runtime. What that actually did was drain the battery in the River 2 Pro and then the battery in the Wave 2 went out and then Adelaide woke up at like four in the morning with no air and no power and no phone charge the next day. She was not happy. So we needed to take a step back. Obviously our existing low power situation in the dome with the 250 watts of solar, the battery bank in the River 2 and the battery bank on the Wave 2, the math didn't work. Remember the Wave 2 is very flexible though. So we decided to run an AC line directly from our big solar power system into the dome with an extension cord which isn't great but remember we couldn't trench because we had some plumbing lines and other electrical lines so this was just a good way to test. After seeing how much more efficient the mini split was in the airstream when we just let it run all the time our new approach was to let the wave 2 run on cool mode during the day when we had plenty of solar to bring the overall temperature down that way it doesn't have to work so hard at night. What we learned was that the Wave 2 could definitely cool the space, but it needed time because of our constant thermal mass transfer. Now we were still worried about running this overnight because remember we had just put the mini split in the Airstream, so we were using more power overnight, but we had just added more solar on the roof of the Airstream cover, so we were filling back up quicker, but this was all very new, and so we were just worried about adding another 300 to 500 watt draw overnight with the Wave 2. So initially before bed, Adelaide would disconnect from AC power, plug in the battery, and run it on fan mode only. This used very little power, but the temperatures would obviously creep back up overnight into the high 80s. We really wanted a better experience for her, so we experimented and we finally landed on eco mode. So if we've been running the Wave 2 all day, the temperature's pretty stable in the dome. At night, we switch it over to eco mode, and this is proving to be a much better combination of cooling and efficiency. Gets it down in the 70s, much better. And this means we're running three air conditioners off our solar system. Whoa. That's crazy. Now, I didn't just want to discount the battery that the Wave 2 came with, good sized battery bank. Surely there was a better use for it. And once we realized that we needed to run it all the time, that use became more clear. During monsoon season, we have high temperatures and epic storms. With our wide open spaces, indirect lightning strikes are a real danger. In fact, our first year this happened to us and caused significant damage to our solar system. So in this video, we actually work to put in better grounding, some lightning SPDs. But honestly, if we're here on the property and a big storm comes in, we're gonna shut off anything that we can just to be safe. So if the Wave 2 has been cooling the dome all day, a storm comes in, we disconnect the AC power, we can still keep running off battery in eco mode for up to eight hours, which is plenty of time for the storm to pass and the temperature to remain the same. Then we can just plug it back in like normal. Living off grid, especially being remote, it is important to have backup solutions like this, but you don't have to be off grid to need backup power. Hurricane season can cause widespread damage and power outages to even the most urban areas, and EcoFlow has been steadily building an impressive suite of backup power solutions with their Delta series and expandable modular batteries. You can quickly and easily build a whole house backup system powerful enough to run even your largest appliances. They're quiet, maintenance-free, charge quickly via grid or solar power, and don't rely on noisy, smelly gas engines to create your power during an emergency. We hope you'll check out the link in the description to learn more about EcoFlow's emergency solutions and save on your next purchase. But before we go, let's take a look at a few other fun facts about the Wave 2. If the Wave 2 is connected to AC power, but also has the battery connected to it, it's gonna charge the battery and run the cooling feature, so it's gonna use more power than you think. That battery charge can pull up to 700 watts, so we found that especially overnight, disconnecting the battery was the most efficient way to use the unit. Air conditioners usually create condensation, and the Wave 2 is no exception. At less than 70% humidity, it should be able to work in the non-drain function, evaporating the excess water as it cools. But at more than 70% and when heating, you're going to need to attach the drain hose, change the drain setting, and let it overflow into a container. Between the compressor and the water pump, this unit can make some pretty strange noises, but overall it's pretty quiet. It does have a sleep mode though, which will actually try to reduce those noises 
when you're trying to sleep. While we didn't have enough battery and solar to run the wave in the dome, you can totally get a Delta. Add some batteries, some more solar panels, and you can make all that math work. One thing we did learn is that vent tubes and monsoon season don't really mix. During a storm, we often have to close that window and take the tubes out. Also, keep the screens on your window. Uh, we may or may not have had a cat that tried to climb down the tube. We definitely did. <laughs> Thankfully, you don't have to use those vent tubes. Obviously, it's more efficient if you do, but interestingly, you can use this unit in reverse. You can put it outside and bring the air into it. The app is actually very nice and makes it easy to switch modes, see the ambient and blower temperatures, the water condensation level, and battery pack percentage from anywhere when the Wave 2 is connected to the internet. It also uses Bluetooth so you can connect by being physically close to it if you don't want to use Wi-Fi. If you know me, you know I've been keeping a very close eye on this power usage and all the data. And I can tell you that we're running about 300 watts. That's some astute observation there. Seriously though, the Wave 2 is working great for this specific application. We're gonna keep running it through the summer and we do appreciate that it will be easy to take out as the temperatures get cooler. And with that, friends, our grand overhaul of cooling solutions here on our tiny shiny homestead are complete. Thanks again to EcoFlow for sending us the Wave 2, letting us experiment with it, and share the results with you. We hope you'll check out that link in the description if you're in the market for any of their backup or cooling solutions. Now that we're nice and cool inside, it's time to get back outside and sweat and work on that hybrid Adobe roundhouse. We'll see you then.